Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, Organized with Joy. Today, I am gonna be working on getting my college age son's things organized. Just this week, we moved him home from his college apartment. He's actually only gonna be here for a couple of weeks because he does have an internship up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So I just have to get things organized according to what he's going to need to take to Dallas, what he's going to need to keep just for next year's apartment and what he'll leave here at home um, just in his room for when he visits. So um, it's just a lot of organizing. In addition to that, um, several of these boxes we purchased for when my daughter moved back and forth from college. So they're very old, been used many times by my daughter and then by my son. We have accumulated some of them over the years and replaced them, um, but I just felt like it was time to just go ahead and replace them all. And while he only has one more year of college left, he will be moving after college into an apartment or a home, whatever he is going to move into after he graduates. So I figured um, it was okay to invest in more boxes, not to mention two of them broke while I was carrying them in the house. So with that said, I need to go ahead and get all this stuff organized today and put in their respective places. Okay friends, in the intro to this video, I did forget to mention that this is a Thoughtful Thursday video. If you're new to my channel or you just don't know what that means, I do have a series on my channel called Thoughtful Thursday where every Thursday, in addition to bringing you some cleaning, decluttering, and or organizing motivation, I also share my thoughts on a topic in the voiceover. So I hope that you might stick around to hear Hear my thoughts on this week's topic a little bit later in the video. Also, I did want to just mention in this shot down in the corner, you might notice that ruggable box and that is a sneak peek to my game room makeover, which will be happening on my channel soon. Uh, currently, my college age son's computer is set up in this room, so I will have to wait until he moves for his internship for the summer, uh, but that will be something to look forward to on my channel in the future. Okay, I'm moving on to this box with all of his bathroom stuff. I might struggle to know how to differentiate what he's going to need for now versus later for this box. I'll have to look through it, but I do know there's these two open bottles. One is just um, body wash and the other one is shampoo and conditioner um but they're all they're both almost all gone and he does have one that's 
not open that is shampoo and conditioner so I think I'm gonna get rid of these two because they're almost all gone they're not completely gone but it's just problematic to store these so he can purchase purchase new body soap once he moves into his apartment in the fall Okay friends, for today's Thoughtful Thursday video, I wanted to talk a little bit about decluttering this week. I wanted to share with you why decluttering isn't always enough to create a clutter-free home. Over the weekend, I was just thinking about how much time, energy, and effort it takes to keep up with our stuff, caring for it, cleaning and organizing it. I came across a quote from Peter Walsh. If you don't know who he is, he's a professional organizer and author, probably best known for the TLC show Clean Sweep. I shared this quote over on my Instagram feed earlier this week, and he says, what I know for sure is that when you declutter, whether it's your home, your head, or your heart, it is astounding what will flow into that space that will enrich you, your life, and your family. This quote has inspired me to continue decluttering my home, even though in some ways it seems like I have nothing left to declutter. When we declutter, we make space for other things that will enrich our lives. I also loved his point that it's not just our physical stuff that takes up space, but also mental and emotional clutter can prevent us from experiencing other beautiful things in life. We must be self-aware, realizing what we spend our time and brain space thinking about and telling ourselves. I like to talk a lot about the importance of self-talk on my channel. It is meaningful what you say to yourself. Also, if there are unresolved emotional issues in life, I encourage you to not ignore them, but to deal with those issues. Whether that's reconciling in relationships, healing from past hurts or trauma, or just dealing with day-to-day -day emotions. This may require seeking professional help, and I can tell you from my experience that it is so worth it. When we make time to deal with our emotional clutter, if you will, it frees up space in our lives and in our minds for something else. It is kind of appropriate that I'm organizing my son's things for this Thoughtful Thursday video topic because he is such an inspiration to me. I view him as someone who is a minimalist. I don't really like using that label, but I do kind of feel like he is a minimalist. He will quickly get rid of items that he's no longer using, and he will go through his items on his own without me prompting him. But for today's video, I did want to camp out on the physical clutter aspect. I think one thing many of us don't realize is that decluttering is usually not enough to keep a clutter-free home. First of all, decluttering is an ongoing process. As long as items are still coming into your home, you will have a need to assess what you are using and loving. Over time, as we go through different stages of life for ourselves and especially for our children, we will need to evaluate what we are still using. In addition to this, I think one of the biggest reasons people feel like their homes are still cluttered despite decluttering is because of the inflow. Things come into our homes organically, if nothing less 
through junk mail and kids' papers, but we may also be contributing to this through our shopping habits. Think about how easy it is for something to come into your home, especially if you do online shopping. You can shop from the comfort of your sofa or even your bed. Within a few clicks, you are done and the item is on its way directly to your front door. Whereas if you want to go through the decluttering process, you must set aside time to evaluate your items, make decisions, sort the items, bag or package up the items for donation, drive to the donation center, or go through the steps it takes to sell an item online, taking a photo, writing a description, etc. It is actually much more difficult to get rid of items than to acquire them. This is something to keep in mind while shopping. I have shared on my channel before about how I did a no spend year back in 2019 and this really opened my eyes to my spending habits. I'm so thankful for that experience as it has helped me to be far more intentional about what comes into my home. Related to this, in order to keep the inflow in check, I do not purchase new things for each season. Like new decor or new clothes, I like to curate my collection of decor and my wardrobe intentionally and purchase items that speak to me. I may add some new items for a particular season, but I don't shop for each new season. In addition to this is how easily we accumulate things because of free items or sales. I have learned that it is okay to say no to free items if it is not something I will love or use. It took time to learn, but now I am much more particular about what is allowed in my home. I have also learned not to get sucked into a good deal. Just because something is on sale or seemingly a good deal doesn't mean I need it or that it will be useful to me. Something else that will make an impact in your decluttering process is accepting that it's okay to have open spaces in your home. Now, I recognize that this may not resonate with everyone. I know some people are maximalists and like every nook and cranny to have something in it. So, well, maybe this entire chat is not for you anyway. But once you get to the point where you have open spaces, then you may be seeing the difference in your home on your decluttering journey. Sometimes we feel the need to fill the space back up, and obviously this is going to be counterproductive if you are getting rid of items just to fill the space back up again. If you are on a decluttering journey, I hope these ideas were helpful to you. It's really not enough just to declutter our spaces. We must change our spending habits as well in order to truly make an impact. I know for me, I just got tired of the cycle of stuff going out, stuff coming in. Slowly but surely, I am seeing more open spaces in my home. It has helped greatly with my anxiety levels, not feeling overwhelmed with stuff in my space, and just not having to take care of as much stuff as I once did. I'm still working on it though. I am thankful for the space I have now for other things to flow into my life, as Peter Walsh says. Wow, I guess I was super chatty for this week's Thoughtful Thursday video, and I did want to let you know that the information that I shared with you today will also be on my website, which is just organizedwithjoy.com. It's always linked in my description box below if you would like to read the blog post in conjunction with this video. But thank you so much for watching this video today. I do hope that the chat that I shared with you was inspiring or helpful to you in some way and I would love to hear from you down in the comments please share your thoughts on my thoughts and I will see you next time bye